Hello, welcome to the Ham Radio Nomad. Um, hello, uh, NoCo Tech and anyone else who is watching. Um, we are going over the Amateur Extra class questions on YouTube. Not, we are on YouTube, yes. The, we're going over the Amateur Extra class questions on Ham Study. If anyone wants to join in and uh, go around and read the questions with me, feel free to click the St Steam Yard link up top. Um, and those who are watching on Team Replay, thank you for thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like the video. And with that, let's get started. Which of the following describes a method of establishing EME contacts? A, judging optimal transmission times by monitoring beacons reflected from the moon. B, storing and foraging digital messages. C, high-speed CW identification to avoid fading. D, time synchronous transmissions alternate alternately from each station. I do not know, so I am going to guess. Um, I'm going to guess A, and I am wrong. So let's do the D. Time synchronized, time synchronous transmissions alternate alternately from each station. JT65 uses time synchronous transmissions alternating and is common to and is commonly used in EME communication. This method is also the same method in FT8. Which circuit is bi-stable? A, flip-flop. B, a polar amplifier. C, an AND gate. D, an OR gate. I do not know exactly what bi-stable bi means. So I'm going to guess A, and I'm correct. So let's see what the explanation says. So. A clock, a clock is a device that periodically switches states, and so is not stable because its its output does not remain in one particular state. The outputs of AND or OR gates immediately reflect the outputs, the inputs of the corresponding circuits, and so are not considered stable circuits. A flip flop can retain its output states after one or more of its inputs have changed. And so it's stable in either of its binary states. Which amateur, which amateur stations are eligible to operate as Earth stations? A, only those of amateur class operators B any amateur station subject to the privilege to the privileges of the class of operator license held by the control operator. C only those of general advance or amateur extra class operators. D any amateur station whose license has fi has filed a pre space notification with the FCC. Well, this question is has a sim similar corresponding ones on the the technical technician and the general class. So it's not a. Um, as I said, it's also on general uh, technician class, so it's not C. And yeah, 
um, you don't need to file anything else. Um, so I believe it is B. Any amateur station subject to privileges of the class of operator license held by that control operator. What describes octagonal frequency division multiplexing? A digi digital multi a digital modulation technique used subcarriers at frequency chosen to avoid inter intersymbol interference. A frequency modulation technique that uses non-harmonic related frequencies. A bandwidth compression technique using Fourier, Fourier years transforms. D, a digital mode for narrow band and slow speed transmission. I've seen the question before, but I can't remember exactly which one it is. So I'm going to guess A. And A is correct. Digital modulation technique using subcarriers to avoid inter, inter symbol interference. Which UF amateur bands are frequencies authorized for space stations? A, 33 centimeters and 13 centimeters. B, 70 centimeters and 33 centimeters. C, 70 centimeters and 13 centimeters. D, seven centimeters only. I'm gonna guess D, 70 centimeters only, because I believe two meters and 70 centimeters are the only UHF and VHF frequencies. And I'm wrong. So it is 70 centimeters and 13 centimeters. Uh, the following bands are authorized for space stations, 17 meters, 15, 12, 10 meter, 6 meter, 10 meter, 6 millimeter, 4 millimeter, 2 millimeter, and 1 millimeter. Um, and then it also has ranges in the, what looks like 40 meter, 20 meter, two meter, 70 centimeter and 13 centimeter. And then some uh, gigahertz frequencies. What is the name of the antenna matching system that matches unba an unbalanced feed line with to an antenna by feeding driven elements both at the center of the element and at a fraction of wavelength to this to one side of the center? A the epsilon match, B the gamma match. D, the delta match, C, C, D, C, the delta match, and D, the stub match. I don't know. So I'm going to guess uh, the delta match. Nope. It is the gamma match.
A gamma match can match impedance below 50%, 50% right up to that. Sorry. A gamma match can ma match impedance below 50 ohms right up to that of 50 ohms to which your transceiver wants to see. A Yagi antenna almost never has an impedance of 50 ohms. How can intermodulate intermodulation interference between two two repeaters occur? A when the signals from the transmitters are reflected in phase from airplanes passing overhead. B when the repeaters are in close proximity and the signals cause feedback in the final amplifier of one or both of the transmitters. C, when the signals up from the transmitters are reflected out of phase from airplanes passing overhead. D, when repeaters are in close proximity and the signals mix in both in the final. Um, this one. Yeah. Okay, so it's I don't think it's it's not an issue with planes overhead. So C and A are out. So we have B or D. So it's a question of whether it's causing feedback in the final amplifier or the signal mix in the final amplifier. And I'm gonna Go, I'm going to guess D. Yep. It's an issue with the mixing in the final amplifier. What does PRB1 require of the regulations affecting amateur radio? A, use of wireless devices in a vehicle is exempt from regulation. B, no limitations may be placed at, on antenna size or placement. C, reasonable accommodation of amateur radio must be made. D, amateur radio operations must be permitted in any private residence. I'm going to go with C. Yep. The other one, the other question in relation to P, PRB1, I believe, is talking about who it applies to. And I believe it is in re it is talking about um, state and local state and local regulations. With, on what portion of the 630 meter band are phone emissions permitted? A, entire band. B, only the bottom three kilohertz. C, none, only the top three kilohertz. I'm gonna guess only the top three kilohertz, because that's where the phone emissions typically are. And it is wrong, so my second guess would be none. And that is wrong. And so it looks like 630 meters is the entire band is, is open. So there is no type limitation on the 630 band. Which of the following describes a G5 RV antenna? 
A, multi-band trap antenna. B, wideband dipole using shorted coax cable for the radiating elements and fed with a four to one balin. C, a multi-band multi dipole fed with coax and a balin through a selected length of open wire transmission line. D, a phased array antenna consisting of multiple loops. I'm gonna guess that it's C. Yep, a G5RV is a multi-band antenna, multi-band dipole antenna fed with coax and a balin through a selected length of open wire transmission line. What do the arcs in the Smith chart represent? A, frequency. B, points of consistent resistance. C, SWR. D, points of consistent reactance. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess D. Yep, it is points of consistent 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 reactance. Hey, Tank Radio, how are you doing tonight? If you want to get on and help me read questions, uh, feel free. Feel free to click the StreamYard link up top. What is the type of antenna pattern? What type of antenna pattern is shown in Figure E9-2? A elevation, B azimuth, C polarization, D radiation resistance. And this is the radiation pattern over the elevation. So I'm going to click try, guess A. Yep. What is the radiation pattern of two quarter, quarter wavelength vertical antennas spaced half space half wavelength apart and fed 180 degrees out of phase. Sounds good, sounds good, Tank Radio, not a problem. A, a uh, figure eight broadside to the axis of the array, B, choroid, C, figure eight, oriented along the axis of the array, D, omnidirectional. I believe this one is B, choroidio. No. So, It is figure eight oriented along the axis of the array. And you can't see, and so, here is the here is the link to a web page all about the different wavelengths the how the wavelengths when two antennas are are in different uh, different distances apart, and whether they're in phase or uh, uh, have a phase shift. How 
how are the capacitors and inductors of a low phase, low pass filter PI pi network arranged between the network input and output? A, two inductors are in series between the input and output and the capacitor is connected between the two inductors and ground. B, two capacitors are in series between the input and output and the inductor is connected between the capacitors and ground. C, an inductor is connected between input and ground and the other inductor is connected between output and ground and the capacitor is connected between input and output. D, a capacitor is connected between the input and ground and another capacitor is connected between the output and ground and the inductor is connected between the input and output. I'm going to guess C. No. It is D. A capacitor is connected between the input and the ground. Another capacitor is between the output and ground. And the inductor is between the input and the output. Think of the symbol pi. It's shaped with two lines down to the ground. For a low pass, for a low pass function, the two capacitors will lead the higher frequencies to ground while opposing the path, while opposing the path to lower frequencies. The inductor leads the lower frequencies to output while opposing the path to higher frequencies. What should a VE do if a candidate fails to comply with the examiner's instructions during the amateur operator's license examination? A, warn the candidate that continue to failure to com comply will result in termination of the examination. B, allow the can candidate to complete the examination but invalidate the results. C, immediately terminate everyone's examination and close the session. D, immediately terminate the can candidate's examination. I'm going to go with D. Yep. If you don't follow instructions, the examination will be terminated immediately. What is the name of an antenna matching system? And we did that one, it is gamma match. What is the magnitude of the impedance of a parallel RLC circuit at residence? <laughs> yep, that's... That's one of the easy ones, thank uh, Frank. Yeah, that's there's a couple of those are the ones that I get right too. What is the magnitude of the impedance of a parallel RLC circuit? A, the a approximately equal to inductive reactance. B, high compared to the circuit circuits. Resonance, resistance, C, approximately equal to the circuit's resistance, D, low compared to the circuit's resistance.
I'm going to It's at residence. So I'm just going to go with C, approximately equal to the circuit circuit's res, uh, resistance. Yep. Um, when it's at residence, things are balanced. So the impedance and the resistance, I believe, should be pretty much equal. What circuit is added to a FM transmitter to boost the higher audio frequencies? A, a heterodyne enhancer, B, a de-emphasis network, C, a pre-emphasis network, and D, a heterodyne suppressor. I'm going to go with a pre-emphasis network, and that is correct. Um, heterodynes I normally hear about in HF radios, and a de-emphasis just doesn't sound like it's boosting anything. Which point on figure E5-1 best represents the impedance of a series circuit consisting of a 30 ohm resistor and a nine picofarad capacitor at 21.2 megahertz. A.3 which is Let's zoom in a little bit so I can read this. A.3, which is at 400, Y400 and X300. B.8, which is at 50, Y50, 300, X. Point one, which is at negative four hundred x, or no, negative four hundred y and three hundred x, and seven, which is at negative three hundred and negative three hundred x and negative four hundred y. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with point 8 because three hundred ohms is for the X. And I believe, here, let me get, pick the answer first before I, and see if I'm right before I, and I'm not. So no point in saying why my thinking's wrong. It is point one, which is negative 400 and negative 400 Y and 300 X. And there is two, it is the inverse of two pi times the frequency times the capacitor. And it's a negative value. So.
Which of the following types of amateur stations communicate? Which of the following types of amateur station communications are prohibited? Communications in a language other other than English. B communications that have political content except allowed by the fairness doctrine. C communications that have religious content. D communications transmitted for higher or material compensation except otherwise provided by the rules. And business isn't allowed, so I'm going to go with D is prohib is prohibited. That is correct. How should how should you general, generally identify your station when attempting to contact a DX station during a context, contest or a pileup? A, set, send the call signal of the DX station three times, the words this is, and then your call station three times. B, send the, your full call sign and grid square. C, send only the two letters of your call sign until make contact. Send your full call sign once or twice. I'm going to go with the simple, just say your full call sign once or twice. What is meant by the term baseband in radio communications? A, the frequency range occupied by a uh, message signal prior to prior to modulation. B the lowest frequency band that a transmitter or receiver co receiver covers. C the unmodulated bandwidth of a transmitted signal. D the basic oscillator frequent frequency in an FM transmitter that is multiplied to increase the deviation or carrier frequency. I'm going to guess C. Nope. It is A, the frequency range occupied by the message signal prior to modulation. Baseband is commonly used as used to indicate the range range band of source frequency used to modulate the transmitted signal. Over what range of frequencies are the FCC human body RF exposure limits? most restrictive a 3 to 30 megahertz b 30 to 300 megahertz c 300 to 3 uh, 3000 megahertz d 30 kilohertz to 3 megahertz so the most most restrictive band is the six meter band. So I am going to go with B, 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. And I'm going to call it an early night tonight. So I think this is going to be my last question.
how does the ladder line compare to a small diameter coaxial cable such as RG58 at 50 megahertz? A, higher SWR, B, smaller reflection coefficient, C, lower loss, D, lower velocity factor. And ladder line is known for its low loss compared to coax, so I'm going to go with C. That is correct. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for those who watch live, and thank you for those who are watching on Team Replay. I will be doing this next week again, and I will be having, for sure, one live stream on Thursday for an FT8 off practice session. So if I don't do anything before then, hopefully I will see you there. And until we talk again, 73.